Oh, there's a lot to say about this show. Well, first we had uh, William Regal come out, and uh, he's hated. John Moxley immediately appears. He's going to kill William Regal for helping MJF win the title. Regal, by the way, notes, no MJF this week. He didn't want to come to this town. He's busy filling a move. And he wasn't actually on the show. He'll be back next week. But he comes out, and uh, John Moxley wants to kill him. And Brian Danielson begs John Moxley not to kill William Regal, noting that he loves this man. Everybody, all of them have done bad things in their lives. And the things that William Regal has done for him, he says, please, just let him go. And so John Moxley tells Regal, what I want you to do is just go. Walk, don't come back. And William Regal ends up leaving. And so uh, next week, MJF is going to explain why Regal turned. Regal sent him an email, another email. And it will all be explained, he says, next week. Now, I should mention that when this was over, the immediate assumption all over the Internet is that Regal is gone and he is going back to WWE. Okay? I do not know... If William Regal is going back to WWE, he may very well be going back to WWE, but I don't believe that if he is going or if he is not one way or the other, I don't think this was his last show. I think there's more to come in this story. So he still could go at some point, but I don't think that this was like the William Regal swan song from, from AEW. Renee's going to interview Keith Lee and uh, Lee... Doesn't even say a word before Swerve shows up. They agree to talk off screen. We had Orange Cassidy versus Jake Hager for the AEW All-Atlantic title. Fun match. Everybody was at ringside. We had dives out of the pile. We had comedy. We had wrestling. And uh, finally, you know, Jake Hager loves that hat. And he was so busy worrying about his hat that he got rolled up and pinned. And then QT and the Factory come out. And uh, before they can say a word, Julia Hart appears, House of Black, all of them are back. And first they annihilate the baby faces. The factory is so happy to see them annihilate the baby faces until they annihilate the factory. And the story here is that the House of Black has returned and they're going to take out everybody, baby faces and heels alike. We had Ricky Starks, Ethan Page in the finals of the Eliminator Tournament. And Ricky Starks is taped up like a mummy, and he sells, and he sells. They had a good match, and in the end, Ricky Starks won. Got the victory. He will be facing MJF at Winners Coming on December 14th. And uh, I don't know how long, you know, there were, there were uh, discussions back and forth about what to do at the pay-per-view. I don't know if any of the discussions involved MJF not winning. But, you know, from day one, they were pushing... Ethan Page as the potential winner of this tournament. And I wonder if maybe there was a back and forth about who should win at the pay-per-view. And so if Moxley won, Ethan Page was going to win the tournament. And if MJF won, then Ricky Starks was going to win the tournament. But one way or the other, Ricky won. It's babyface versus heel. And that's coming up December 14th. And I don't think that uh, Ricky Starks is going to win. But I've been wrong before. You remember Jade Cargill and Bow Wow? Well, the follow-up was, we ain't going to talk about Bow Wow. And Kira Hogan was fired. Boo. So, hey, you know, she's she's not a bad worker, and she's got charisma, and uh, I think she's going to be all right on her own. I think she's got more to offer than just being a baddie, in my opinion. <laughs> Well, she does. And you know what? The team with Tasha Steeles that she had an impact. Again, bigger fish in a much smaller pond at the time. But, you know, them as a group, I thought that was good. We'll see how she does on her own. Oh, you know, I'm going to wait till the end to talk about this next match. Jamie Hayter and Britt Baker beat Sky Blue and Willow Nightingale and Ty Mello and Anna Jay. They announced a lot here, actually, before the match. Thunder Rosa has been stripped of the title. She is no longer the champion. Jamie Hayter is no longer the interim champion. She is now the full-on champion. And they added that um, Tony Storm, who was an interim champion her entire reign, is now going to be remembered as the champion. Yes. Yes, Mike? 
No, nothing. I was trying to signal our video guy to switch the shot back to you. Oh, no, we like we like just looking at you where, staring off into space. But anyway, uh, so now Jamie Hayter's a champion. They are going to interview her, but Britt just cuts her off, cuts the promo. And then they, uh, they do the match, and Britt Baker gets the pin. Now, I don't know if you guys have been paying attention, but I do not remember the last time Britt Baker got a win. She has been doing job after job after job after job. Now she won, so that tells me that uh, they're doing whatever the build is going to be to the Britt Baker, Jamie Hayter split and feud over this title. So there was nothing in the match that indicated that, but her winning and also cutting off Jamie Hayter, I mean, we're we're moving to that at this point, I would say. Acclaimed promo, which literally led to nothing except a uh, Jay Lethal, a Jeff Jarrett, uh, they all appeared backstage, and it looks like that's going to be the next match. Jay Lethal and Jeff Jarrett versus the Acclaimed for the tag team titles. Well, it's team. All right. And my God, this main event. Chris Jericho and Tomohiro Ishii. And you know, I've seen a lot of matches where guys chop the bejesus out of each other, and their, their chest ends up bleeding. And uh, Buddy Wayne and I, we would chop each other. We would chop the hell out of each other, and we'd have, you know, cuts everywhere. Tom and I as well. And Marco. You know who chopped me harder than anybody in my career was that little idiot Marco Stunt. <laughs> that guy, that little moron chopped me so hard. But, bro, never, never did I look like Chris Jericho. This dude, not only did he get busted open, he's freaking pouring blood out of his chest in this match with the she -E. They did a total Ishii-style match. They're doing the forearms. They're doing the chops. They're doing the, you know, lean into the punches, the one-count kick out by Ishii. This place is going crazy for Ishii. And Ishii's done matches that were good. They're the crowd, you know, they liked it and everything like that, and they cheered and everything. But, man, they got into Ishii like, this guy's the greatest. And uh, Jericho was awesome. Ishii was awesome. The crowd loved it. The match starts out. You can see on video here, the match starts out with they're supposed to do the handshake. Jericho flips the guy off. Finally, at the end, after this battle, Jericho puts this guy in the lion tamer. Is she in the lion tamer, flips off Jericho, and then he taps with his middle finger. I loved this match. Jericho retains the title, and then uh, Claudio Castagnoli lays him out afterwards as he went after Ian Riccoboni. And uh, why, you ask? Well, you'll find out in 10 minutes on Rampage. Now, very quickly, we got to talk about this tag match. Left myself some time. The match is a death triangle against the Elite. Second match of the best of seven for the trio's titles. Okay? Now, long story short, just the match itself. Great match, all the nuttiness, and then finally at the end, Matt Jackson gets a hold of a hammer. He's going to get his revenge, but Penta gets a second hammer, and he hits Matt Jackson, pins him. So uh, if you remember the first match, they're, they're, they're subtly telling a story here. Pac wanted Phoenix to cheat. Phoenix never wanted to cheat. He gave him the opportunity to cheat at the pay-per-view. Phoenix wouldn't do it. Finally, at the end of the match, Phoenix is being hoisted up. Pac forces a hammer into his hand, and, and Phoenix has two options. Die or use the hammer. He uses the hammer, he gets to win, but he's still not happy with himself. This Penta. Sierra Miedo. He don't care. Man, he used that hammer. He was joyful to hit Matt Jackson with this hammer. So the Elite is down by two now, going into the next match. And, uh, of course, all everybody's talking about is uh, the elite mocking CM Punk. And uh, everyone, you know, in the Internet has chosen their sides. And the, uh, the, sides, the side that uh, is behind the elite, they, they're laughing. And the side that is uh, behind CM Punk, they're absolutely disgusted. And, uh, and I don't want to pick sides here because it makes people mad. But I want to make uh, just a couple of comments. Number one. I heard people go, I can't believe they were mocking CM Punk unprovoked. Dude, listen, I don't care whose side you were on, but dude, the Elite came out on the ramp, 
and the fans were chanting F the Elite. They were chanting CM Punk. They were on the Elite the entire match. And the Elite decided, you know what? Dude, we're going to just do what we're going to do. Now, I can tell you, and I don't know about all of them, but there was stuff that was done in the match that uh, that was not something that they planned going out there. They were out there. They they knew they were going to be heels. I mean, they, they figured they were going to be booed. But in the heat of the moment, when the fans were on them, they decided, let's have some fun with this, and that's what they did. There was no, hey, let's plan out some stuff to irritate the people or anything like that. And, uh, and the other thing I'm going to say, and we don't know this, but if the tables had been turned and the Elite were out of here and CM Punk was wrestling this match and the fans were chanting FCM Punk in Rancho Cucamonga, you don't think Punk would have gone with it? Of course he would have! And he should have. Back in a moment, Observer Live. You know, I gotta say one last thing about this before uh, before we run out of time. You know, what's funny about the whole thing is even if you you didn't like what the Elite did, I mean, the fact of the matter is, it's wrestling, and the idea is to give the crowd what they want and entertain them. And those fans wanted to hate the Elite, and the Elite saw it, and they leaned into it, and. The the attempted buckshot where Matt fell down during the commercial break, I mean, you could just see the fans were eating this stuff up. And it didn't hurt the match at all. In fact, if anything, it enhanced the match. The end of the match, the fans are going nuts with this is awesome chance for this thing. They entertained the fans. The fans had a great time. They got to boo the hell out of the elite. The elite gave them stuff to boo. Nobody got hurt about it. I don't know. I think it's much ado about nothing in this case. I just got a big kick out of the fact that Wednesday night the show was over with. There were people that were, of course, vehemently against the elite. There were people that were fighting those people by being vehemently against CM Punk. And then there was another sliver of people that just looked at all of this and went, you know what? This is all of work. He's coming back. <laughs> I can't. I well, cannot tell you how many times... I actually have heard people go, damn it, this guy's coming back. He's coming back. He's got to be coming back, right? So we'll see. Well, you know, <laughs> he's not coming back. <laughs> if that's what you, if that is a conclusion anybody got out of this match, I can tell you that he is not coming. Well, you know, I can't say he's not. Let soon. me put it this way. Not soon. Let me put it this way. <laughs> he might come back someday. But my point is, what they did in this match was not sending you, the audience, a clue that he was imminently coming back or was going to come back. Like, at this point, at this point, there are no plans for him to come back. That doesn't mean that everything can change. But if you watch and you were like, oh, man, you know, for sure after this, you, that's not what this was. This was, a fa this was a fan base that was rabid. They decided to play to it. And that's what it was. And you ain't going to see it next week. The WWE legendary joke book. Why do WWE superstars' fingers hurt? <laughs> <laughs> Why were Gene Erkerlund's pants always so angry? Erkerlund? <laughs> Where does Beth Phoenix shop online? Amazon? The Glamazon! Oh, yeah. No. No. I mean, no. No, that is the answer. Glamazon. That's what I said. <laughs> what? You said Gramazon. No, I oh. said Glamazon. Oh, there should be a Gramazon. <laughs> yeah, Gramazon, actually. You get, like, puppy you get pictures. it to you real slow. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm. The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.